So I have said it before and I will say it again. This channel is not for movies per se, right? It's for gaming, it's for music, but I just can't help it anymore to sneak a movie in just once in a while. Um, the movie I wanted to talk about today is Terminator Dark Fate. I, I watch a lot of movies and that's the reason why I just can't help myself anymore to do it. Terminator Dark Fate, um, well, the Terminator franchise in general is very close to the heart. I'm, I'm a kid of the 80s. Um, I was there when the first movie came out. I was there when the second movie came out. Uh, Everything produced after two is just one big pile of <laughs> horseshit. I, three was just laughable. Terminator Genesis. I don't know what that is. It it also has some of the same flaws that have been made in Terminator Dark Fate. I will get into that in a minute. Um, there is just one one I actually happen to like uh unpopular pinning incoming that's terminator salvation i know it's not been received well by fans uh, by this fan it was okay-ish received the reason is that it finally did something different after three installments because it was the one released after three after three installments doing exactly the same thing which worked in the first two but Terminator Salvation had just another feel, another look, and it told the story right before one starts. So that actually did something different, and that worked for me. Now, Terminator Dark Fate, I refused to watch that movie for a long time because of all the, the scores, the meta scores, meta critics, everything that came in that wasn't great. And after the deception of... Terminator Genesis, which I hope to revitalize the whole franchise, um, which it didn't. It just messed up a lot of things. Um, now, Terminator Dark Fate came out. I, I doubt it so long. Um, and eventually, I just bought it and I watched it. Yeah, you, you hear me? I buy movies. I buy all my movies. <laughs> I think that's... I think you're unique in this world right now, but I buy all my movies. Okay, but um, what did got me excited is Tim Miller is the director, but James Cameron is back on board. And if one could do it to revitalize the whole franchise, then it's him. And the good thing is, is that they pretend that everything after two didn't happen, which is good. They just threw it overboard and wanted to create something that is a direct follow-up after part two. <coughs> now, if you're not interested in spoilers, just move away. But the, the movie starts, final chance to move away if you don't have seen the movie, haven't seen the movie yet. So the movie starts with killing John Connor. Apart from the fact that it's one of the best CGI-driven movie scenes I've ever seen, it's so perfectly crafted. Only the whole... He's been blasted by a shotgun, so you would expect somebody to be really... <laughs> You're not that lightly wounded <laughs> when you being shot by a shotgun. But okay, that's maybe to make it accessible for a wider range uh, of audience. But they kill John Connor. And I know there was a lot of backlash from uh, from from fans, but I do get it. I I do strongly get it because if you watch the commentary uh, and all the extras that are included, Tim Miller says the movie of John Connor was told, and it was time to start over again. And actually, he is right. Okay. Um, the thing that if you've seen the movie, then there is a huge problem immediately because Tim Miller and also James Cameron said, we wanted to start over again, tell something fresh, tell something new. But they're not. The new story is exactly the same as the old story, but then told by different people. You know, 
John Connor is now a very sp- sweet sp- Mexican, Spanish slash Spanish Mexican girl that has just like John Connor in 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 two and in in well, one to an extent, but he wasn't born yet. But in two, he also had a, does not have a clue what he's going to be in the future, and nor does she. Neither did she. And we also have Kyle Reese, which is now a future soldier, a lady coming from the future, of course, to protect her because she's eventually going to be the leader of the resistance. In in what freaking universe is that a revitalization or a fresh story? It's exactly the same story, but it is so influenced by social justice warrior activism agenda that they took a very sweet girl and I don't know what she is, but she is far from representing a super soldier. I'm not saying that women can't be a super soldier, but there are tons of other people that badass women that could fulfill the role. I've seen the new Tomb Raider. Well, new, it's not really new, but the latest Tomb Raider, not with Angelina Jolie, but with a girl I name I'm now... I forgot, but <clears throat> that Tomb Raider, that is a badass girl. She would fit that role better than she did. And the problem, i that's the first problem I have, though, is that the new super soldier is constantly afraid. She's constantly surprised. She's got zero clue what to do. And the only thing she can come up with is run. And the only reason why she's so badass and can fight is because she's augmented. She's been and en- well enhanced, if you will, by a unfortunate e- series of events. She's augmented, enhanced, more of a cyborg type of thing, and that's why she's so badass. Other than that, also the scene with the cabin where they sit there with the Terminator and with Sarah Connor and blah blah. She's constantly surprised and afraid the good thing about this movie is of course that our (laughs) miss miller sarah connor is back and and to me she's the badass in this in this movie she and arnold to an extent arnold carry this entire movie carry this entire movie it's they want to revitalize the whole series but it's the two veterans that carry the movie The two new ones, the little girl and that so-called super soldier girl, are totally forgettable. Totally forgettable. They make no impression whatsoever. What I and that's the problem I have with with this movie. If you just look at it as a standalone movie, not being a Terminator movie, but a science fiction action movie. It still has the same flaws with two forgettable characters and two okay characters, one really good, Sarah Connor. Um, then this movie is okay. It's it's okay. If you haven't seen it yet, <clears throat> I think you could come to the conclusion when you're done that you are reasonably entertained for two hours and a bit. It's by the stretch of an imagination. It's not a bad movie at all. You know, it starts off quite quickly. It's got a high pace. It's got a high tempo. Even the second act in the middle, it's, of course, there is a bit more calm to it. Um, But it's okay. There is, if you put it in the Terminator environment, in the Terminator saga, there is one extremely big problem and they started that off in terminated genesis and that is that our dear friend the terminator is either t800 or an 850 well arnold schwarzenegger <clears throat> he got the role to act like a freaking grandpa that will be out fishing more than being a badass robot. And 
I don't get why they do this. Schwarzenegger is playing a T-800, which is a badass robot from the future designed to kill shit <laughs> and to hunt that down. In what freaking universe <laughs> is it getting beers from a refrigerator and <laughs> putting a lemon in that and making jokes? There is one movie where they pull this shit off. And that is Terminator 2. In that movie, they pulled off that Schwarzenegger was able to play a badass robot and combine that with trying to mimic some human things, you know. But eventually, he made that believable by still getting back to the fact that he was and is a robot. I swear to God, when I saw Genesis, I almost forgot I was looking at a robot. And in Terminator Dark Fate, when they're sitting outside in the front porch and he tells that he is changing diapers and that... Why? Why not take... Why, why can't, he, he said it himself, with killing John Connor, his orders are over, so he didn't know what to do. And in what freaking universe, even robots from the future, why would it we be believable that a Terminator then comes up with the idea of just wandering around, having a look at the planet, settling down, having a wife and a kid, Explaining that it's not a physical relationship. He changes diapers. It, well, and, and the fuck? You know? <laughs> it's so unbelievable. Why not design a story about a Terminator that has destroyed his own future? Of course. And the future altered. It changed. It never happened. With killing John Connor. But also... Killing Skynet or destroying Skynet, which, which happened too. So eventually, the future never happened that Sarah Connor always thought would happen. They stopped it. And then we have a Terminator from a future that is never happening. That could give some really inspiring new stories. You can even let him wandering around the planet be completely rogue, just bringing mayhem. Trying to find out to revitalize his own future. I don't know. You can tell different stories. John is that, so there needs to happen new things. But what they've done now is they created a similar future, which happens a bit later, but it's still a AI that is designed for for defense and eventually goes rogue. It 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 comes self-aware. And eventually we have a leader of a resistance and we have a future soldier that is being sent from the future to protect her. The only thing that I, maybe you guys can help me on this front, but I'm I'm completely oblivious in that one, is that this so-called super soldier has GPS markings on her body. Her boss or her her captain or her general sergeant tattooed that to her body which is strange because eventually she said to herself like I'm not I'm not able to <laughs> memorize something but okay it's tattooed to her body and she has no idea why and the GPS locations are the exact locations of where the Terminator is how 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 Maybe that was for a future part, which eventually will never happen because we know that the, the next follow-up of, of Dark Fate will never will not happen. Not anytime soon. <clears throat> Sarah Connor receives text messages where the next future things will happen. And a future soldier tattoos the GPS location of the Terminator. But the Terminator is from a future that never happened. So how can someone in that new future can't know where he is so there are a lot of questions surrounding that what is good about this movie is the complete and constant 
drive of events. I like that in an action movie like that. There is always something going on, the CGI's, the special effects, and especially the fighting scenes. I think they're freaking awesome. I actually think they're freaking awesome, especially the last one and the one in the plane. I think it's very well crafted, very well choreographed. Is that a word? I think so. If it's not, it's a word right now. I think it's absolutely well done. But in the Terminator saga, I do think that we're not looking at one of the best movies. And I think they've missed some marks, but also some valuable opportunities to really start over again. It's exactly the same movie as 1 and 2, pimped up with a lot of CGI, with two characters that are highly unbelievable. John Connor in part 2 was a believable character. He was a badass, rogue kid, bit of an arrogant douchebag, uh, great with technology. This young lady, no doubt a fine young lady, very nice, but she's too nice. She's not really good, <laughs> well costed. And I think there are more reasons why these people are costed than pure uh, does this fit in the story and do we have the most talent in-house. They're not talented actors. Not, not believable at all. And the future soldier is something that I've got... I, I would have... I'm, I'm really curious on why she has been chosen to play this role. She's got no quality at all to... Uh, play a badass future shoulder. As just said, there are tons of other women who could do it, who are believable. That, that last one from Tomb Raider, and uh, and Angelina Jolie himself as well, is a badass woman. So there are tons of other ones who can do it. Um, so to me, the the movie will get a C plus. It's not a B. It's it's a C plus. It's not a D or an E as well. Um, it's not that bad. It's it's actually a entertaining, fun movie with a lot of open ends, with a lot of loose ends, and a lot of missed opportunities, and a lot of people who shouldn't be in there. And then I even haven't even spoken about the new Terminator Rev Nine. I actually think it, it it's badass. It looks good. He he was okay. He wasn't as believable as the T-1000 liquid metal one from 2. Um, they, they shouldn't talk that much. And if they talk, it should be very... Without any emotion. Um, but on the other side, the, the Rev-9, I think it's absolutely well-crafted. And if you think, what does Rev-9 stands for? It's Revelation 9, if you know the Bible. Uh, you can check it out and read it. <laughs> it's actually... Uh, um yeah it hits the mark if you're making a movie like this and you call it rev 9 it makes sense uh if you watch if you read the bible uh especially rev 9 revelations so to me a b plus if you haven't seen it yet go ahead but i do think that you will have the same feeling as me that is that missed opportunities i will be back shortly with you guys uh, i've got some random streams lined up for you uh, it's just a collection of the rainbow six seed streams on twitch if you if you can't uh, if you haven't catch me there yet go to twitch.tv uh, and look for movement six uh, you will find me there i'm streaming almost every day uh, i don't have a schedule yet but we're trying to i'm trying to do as much as possible um, and i will do a new movement sessions for you guys as well just to give some joy and happy with some music uh, during these dark ages for now, movement six. Ah.